The stories do not make headlines every night, but the questions surrounding and the upset caused by police shootings of African Americans, they're not going anywhere. Charlotte, North Carolina saw a second night of riots following the death of Kevin Scott. The Charlotte Police Department claims the shooting was justified and they have body cam video of the shooting that they have not released publicly, saying that it does not show Scott definitively pointing a gun at any officers. Scott's family will be allowed viewing of the footage, but they are worried what might happen if the video is in fact released. They are appealing for calm in the city, even though the National Guard has now been brought in. Now the situation in Tulsa, calmer, that after 40-year-old Terrence Crutcher was shot and killed by a white police officer on Friday. Video released by the police showed that Crutcher had his hands up as in fact he was shot by the officer, but they did not show what happened in the moments leading up to the shooting. The officer today, she was charged with first degree manslaughter. This as the memories of similar incidents in Ferguson, Missouri, Staten Island, Cleveland, Baltimore, South Carolina, and other date lines in America linger. Now the family of Amadou Diallo, they know all about when police interactions with communities of color go wrong. Police, as many of you well remember, fired at Diallo 41 times as he stood in his Bronx doorway back in 1999. Diallo, it turns out, was unarmed with only his wallet in his hands. The NYPD officers who killed him, they were later acquitted of murder charges. Now, 17 years after Diallo's death and with similar police interactions leading to more heartbreak and outrage, um, Diallo's mother says that she herself has found peace. This, as she sat down with Dominic. Mrs. Diallo, you made page one news the other day when it was reported that you actually want to sit down with one of the NYPD officers that fired 41 shots at your son and meet with that officer. Why do you want to sit down with him? I think that uh, sometime when we uh, do interviews uh, words can be taken out of context, and um, in this case, that's all I have to say for that right now. Okay, Mrs. Diallo, we'll, we'll move on. What is clear, what I have noticed throughout all these years, is that you have forgiveness in your heart. I believe in forgiveness. I believe every human being deserves forgiveness. Deep in my heart, I believe that. Mrs. Diallo, another such encounter between police and community has happened again, this time in Oklahoma. What goes through your mind when you see videos like that? It's something very hard to watch. I believe that all of us have something to give so that we can change this. I have suffered my, the loss of my son, but I do believe that we have to come past this because I ra I'm raising, I'm helping my daughter raise her sons. I have three grandsons. I think the future should be brighter for all. It's hard to watch. The Amadou Diallo Foundation is committed to promote racial healing. And that is my mission through the foundation. I'll continue to do so. Is it tough, Mrs. Diallo, to watch such videos? Like, for example, uh, here in New York, the Eric Garner case? That was the most difficult image. And I felt for the mother that will, you know, and the family. They will relive that on and on again. I reached out. I came to New York because the community of New York embraced me. And I came and lent my voice. I met the mother and the families of Eric Garner. That was hard. I felt it's, it is so difficult. But at the same time, I want to be there. I want to be there to show support and pray with them. Having, living through this and understanding that it's not ending, but some way, somehow, we have to find a way. 
Mrs. Diallo, how do you feel in general about police officers? All police officers are not bad. I do believe that. But I remember because we do communicate with mothers who lost their children. In a private way, we have conversation, late night conversation on the phone. One of the mother told me that how can a police officer take someone else's uh, life and go home and hug their family? Do they feel that, uh, that loss? Do they feel the, the pain? I said, I do believe that. They, f they must have felt something if that happened, but you see, we are bound to live together. The communities need law enforcement c to help, and they need us too. It's going to take a while, but I think many good people are working hard to bring those wall two walls together. One of the toughest parts of my job, Mrs. Diallo, frankly, is to sit down with mothers who have lost their children. Many years ago, as the international press awaited you, the path between you and I crossed. And what I have been able to see from all of this is that you are so dignified. Wow. How do you explain that you have been so dignified over the years? I take one day at a time. It's a long journey to healing. A very long journey to healing. I think that uh, this is something that you have no formula to use. You just pray and you have setbacks. You have moments of crying, you have moments of breakdowns, but you rise up every day when you think about the love of your child, that you represent your child. I promised my son, remember? when we did our interview? I do. I will never give up on Amadou. I promise him that. Nice job, Dob. I have a question. Do you think, let's go back 17 years ago, and Luima wasn't that far apart in that mm -hmm. crime. If there were body cams and the video was around, would we have had even more riots in, than we saw? Uh, with Diallo, I'm, I'm glad you asked that because I can put this in perspective. Yes. Remember the historical uh, thing that was going on. You had people that had never been arrested before in their lives. They were so upset at Mayor Giuliani, who refused to sit down and talk to black elected officials, that they engaged from David Dinkins to Rangel to McCall to C. Virginia Fields. Every day they held protests at one police plaza, engaging in civil disobedience, getting themselves arrested. So yes, if they, and especially something as graphic, I believe he was hit 19 times, hit by 19 different bullets. And he's holding his wallet. And he's holding his wallet. <laughs> they're, they're having a gathering for him uh, this upcoming Thursday. It would have been this year. His 41st birthday, 41 bullets fired, his 41st mm -hmm. birthday, it'll be at Riverside Church. You've been on both sides as prosecutor and defense attorney. I just, I think, thank gosh they have body cameras now and dashboard cameras, but it's almost gotten to the point where people, even when they see the video, will see what they want to see in certain yeah. ways. Yeah. Um, I see the situation unfolding um, in Charlotte, and now they have announced they're going to bring charges against the officer in Tulsa. Um, I, do you think that there's a light at the end of the tunnel where there's going to be so much transparency going forward that people won't say, oh, it was a throwaway gun, or, oh, you know, they're, 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 they're giving us their sign of, or they dropped drugs in the car or whatever else? Or people still not believe it, even if they see it? Well, you know, first, it's interesting because I... I been doing this for so many years on both sides of the aisle. And what, what frightens me is that uh, the frequency with which these shootings take place and not restricted to any one particular local area. Yep. You know, multi-state. And 
I think as rural, a, as urban, a, suburban, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, and I, as I was mentioning to Dominic before, I mean, it, it's become an epidemic. Now, to your question about the, the, the body cams and the dash cameras, look, that's all for the good, because basically the camera, the picture's worth a thousand words. Whatever happened, if it's captured on the video, that's going to dispel any questions as to, you know, who did what to whom and wh whether there was any wrong. But interestingly enough, just the other day, there was an, um, something in the, in the news about uh, some video of showing a police officer in St. Louis planting a gun in the yeah. car of somebody that had been shot. So. That is case in point. You know, I thought of you, Scott, in that, imagine, God forbid, in Nyack or, or pick a city, um, something, there's a racially um, charged case where a person of color was killed by a law enforcement. If it happened in 2016 and you were, uh, after five terms, you think it had enough, but if you were uh, an exec of a county, in this case, I'm just... Would you have handled it differently than you would have, let's say, 15 years ago, where you almost have to, you can't let the, the case work its way through and the investigation finish? You almost have to get out in front of it and, 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 and address it even before you're necessarily ready to? Yes, I think so. And I think there's a real great distinction here between the Tulsa situation. Sure. And, and the, if you look at those, the withholding of, of uh, imagery, which would show that the gun was there, in the Tulsa, there was no gun. I mean, the man had his hands in the air. Um, and yet it's been handled differently, and the communities are different, so you can't really compare it that easily. But you're better off, even if you're... It, to come out quickly and be as open as you can about what you know about it from the inf law enforcement yep. side. Um, yes. Gosh, uh, we're of course going to continue to follow the situation and as I said, the National Guard uh, is now in Charlotte and there promise to be more demonstrations tonight. Hopefully they will be peaceful. Alright, coming up next, Chris Christie not on trial in Bridgegate, at least not officially, but the prosecution, they seem focused on the governor anyhow and his numbers show the impact the trial is having.